Lately, ChatGPT has been all over the news, all over the media. Uh, AI has come to the forefront of our information age, and uh, people are thinking about AI. They're thinking about investing in it, all different th cool things you can do. Well, obviously, AI is not a new thing. Uh, Chat, B Chat GPT, I guess, is kind of a relatively new thing. It's been around for a little bit, but people are finally catching on to it, signing up for it, including me. I've messed around with it. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, you know, another company people might not think of is Tesla. They're at the forefront of artificial intelligence. And if you maybe want to invest or be part of that AI revolution, a great way to do that would be to purchase a Tesla with the full self-driving capability. Full self-driving capability is artificial intelligence. It's what we call uh, general artificial intelligence. Obviously, for a computer to talk to you and answer questions and write scripts and uh, songs and, you know, it takes a lot of uh, computing power. Well, also, you know, driving a car, navigating through the world, uh, reacting to an ever-changing environment around you is also <laughs> requires a lot of uh, computing power. And Tesla is at the forefront of it with its full self-driving capability. And uh, eventually, you know, it's still in beta, it's still improving, but eventually uh, I think Tesla is going to solve the full self-driving. And uh, when they do, they're basically going to solve artificial general intelligence. And um, what you can apply to a car driving around in a world that, you know, reacting to an ever-changing environment, you could also apply to maybe a robot working in a factory or maybe a robot, you know, vacuuming or folding your clothes in your house. I mean, that's thinking a little bit further ahead, but uh, this <laughs> this car is a robot. This car is artificial intelligence and it, it's working artificial intelligence. Believe me, I know because I actually own a Tesla myself, very similar to this, a 2019 Model 3 uh, with full self-driving capability. I've owned that vehicle for about six months. I've been using the full self-driving beta for five months. I've already had a number of updates. It's improving every month. In fact, a uh, update is supposed to come out pretty soon, called, I think called V11, which is supposed to be a big update to full self-driving. Right now, full self-driving, if you buy a brand new Tesla or if you buy a used Tesla doesn't have it, it's $15,000 and then you have the software, I guess for the life of owning that vehicle, or uh, you can subscribe to it as a software as a service for $200 a month where you, know, you pay every month for it, but you never own it. I think when Tesla finally f solves uh, full self-driving, and this is my speculation, it's not, you know, fact or written in stone anywhere, but I think that they probably won't sell it anymore. They'll probably sell, you know, sell it as a service, just like, you know, you can't buy a Microsoft Office anymore or Adobe Photoshop. You have to subscribe for it and pay yearly or monthly membership. I think that's what's going to happen. So I think people that do own the full self-driving who got, got into it early on, they might be at a beneficial position. For a number of reasons. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think the biggest one is that, you know, if you do have a full self-driving vehicle to the point where a human doesn't need to be in it and it can go and drive around on its own, well, instead of having a, a vehicle, you have like a piece of investment property. You have a capital good that can go out there and make you money. You have a car. As I guess it's like having a, a taxi cab with a taxi driver, but the taxi driver, you don't have to pay them overtime. You don't have to pay them any money. They don't take any bathroom breaks. They won't sue you for, you know, <laughs> harassment or, you know, cruel or working conditions. Uh, they don't need to sleep. <laughs> uh, so you potentially could have a car out there that could be driving around making money offsetting the cost of the vehicle. Um, I would, I'm hoping to do that with my own Tesla. It could never happen. It could be realistically three, four or five years in the future. But that's the one reason why I bought my Tesla, and I, I want to be one of the first people to do it. So I guess <laughs> I'll report to you uh, in the future when we get to that point and tell you how I'm doing. Uh, maybe if you're kind of thinking along the same lines, this could be a great ticket to entry. And at the price of this one is, I mean, really what we're asking for this really isn't any more than a non-Tesla without full self-driving. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, this having that $15,000 option, this is a great bargain at the price. And believe me, I was thinking really hard, number crunching. Hey, how can maybe I add a second Tesla to my fleet? But I already have enough money in car payments. I don't have any extra money to buy another Tesla. But believe me, I was thinking very, very hard about buying this one. And if, uh, you know, if I happen to come in any money, I might actually buy it. <laughs> but as of, this, as of making this video, it's still for sale. All right, so I guess that's the biggest part of this vehicle is the Tesla full self-driving. And uh, shortly, I'm actually gonna do a drive in my Tesla 
uh, to show you how it works. Because uh, the way full self-driving works, it's kind of like playing a video game. Uh, Tesla, you know, wants to see, you know, see that you can utilize the software before they, you know, unlock uh, further potential in it. So if you purchase this Tesla, and right now uh, we just uh, transferred ownership of this Tesla, so we know that the full self-driving uh, software is going to stay with the vehicle because we already transferred this to our business account and it, it kept the software so we're not going to lose the software when we transfer it over to your account if you buy it. Um, but basically uh, Tesla wants you to drive a uh, hundred miles on their regular autopilot and make sure that you know you don't have any forced interventions that you're not you're using it properly before they unlock the full self-driving. Pretty smart and potentially they talk about other future things like maybe uh, you know, you'll be able to, the next step will be able to use the full self-driving without having to keep your hand in the steering wheel. Uh, you know, once you have like maybe a certain thousands of miles of driving without any forced interventions and stuff like that. Again, like playing a video game. Okay, you've proven to us that you've, uh, you know, done really well. Well, you're, you're leveling up, you're upgrading, and you can unlock more features uh, with your full self-driving. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting w way of approaching things, but I think it's very smart. Okay, so let's talk more about the Tesla itself, and we'll talk more about full self-driving uh, when we get behind mine and, and uh, drive mine, because we can't use it on this one. We have to drive this one for 100 miles on autopilot, but it's unlocked on mine, so it will operate the same as on this one when we get into mine. Okay, so this is a 2019 Tesla Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive. Uh, for 2019, they're kind of fa phasing out the uh, rear-wheel drive versions of the long-range, uh, pretty much. For a little bit in 2019 and, and, and going forward, uh, long range versions of the Model 3 are all wheel drive only. Uh, I guess one benefit of, over a 2019 all wheel drive long range versus a rear wheel drive like this one, you get about 10 or 15 more miles of range. Uh, that electric motor in the front uh, adds weight to the vehicle, so that will take away efficiency. And having you know two electric motors using electricity versus one. I mean, it's not quite as efficient as just this one with a rear electric motor. The all-wheel drive is a little bit faster, 0 to 60 in the 4 second range, where this is the 5 second range. But believe me, this thing is really fast, instant throttle, throttle response. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different driving experience than a gas car. You just hit the throttle and go. There's no thinking about it, no hesitation for the transmission to shift gears or for the engine to rev up. It's just instant thrust and it's uh, very, very fun <laughs> as well. 23,899 miles. Uh, one thing I love about Teslas is uh, you have most of the majority of this functionality in this screen right here, so it's infinitely configurable. So it's constantly being updated and improved every month. Tesla's doing updates, adding features like the blind spot camera, improving um, the autopilot, improving the safety features, uh, adding more things like, you know, uh, TikTok and Twitch and Disney Plus. So, you know, the cool thing about Tesla is it's kind of like your iPhone. You can have an older iPhone, but, you know, the display, the functionality is going to be similar as buying a brand new iPhone. Like, looking at this screen, you can get into a 2023 Model 3, and the screen, the functionality is going to be very, very similar. There's a few things that they've added on some of the newer ones that this doesn't have, like a megaphone update, uh, which basically can, you know, fart or, you know, change the sound of the, the horn or, uh, you know, play music through it, things like that. Uh, but the, the, like I said, the cool thing is, is even though this vehicle, you know, it's in 2019 and 2023, uh, the functionality with the over the updates, is, you know, so even though it's a car that gets older, in a lot of ways, it still gets better. Where a lot of other cars, they just simply get older and more obsolete the older they get. Not quite the case with this one. And then with the, uh, you know, the full self-driving capability, every time they make improvements to that software, you're locked in. You're going to keep on getting updates on the software. I mean, for the life of this vehicle, um, and it's never going to stop getting better. I mean, as you know, as long as the human existence is here and Tesla is st still in business, they're always going to be improving the full self-driving. Even when it's out of beta, they're always going to improve it. It's going to become safer and more capable. So the Model 3 is a compact uh, performance luxury sedan. It's what we call a category killer. It really kind of dominates in all categories, performance, efficiency. Um, I love the space inside. Even though it's a compact, you have lots of interior space. I am very comfortable. It's also very quiet. I, I look at my Tesla as almost an extension of my living space. With that amazing infotainment system that allows me to stream music. Um, I just feel comfortable and, and serene in it.
And uh, you know, it's kind of like a living room. Like uh, maybe I don't want to go in the grocery store with my wife and I'm in the car with my kids. Well, guess what? We can put up on YouTube or Disney Plus on the infotainment system and watch, uh, you know, watch movies or watch, you know, videos like we were in our living room. And uh, the sound system is really nice in this thing. So when you watch movies on the uh, infotainment system, you actually get a like surround sound cinematic experience. It actually sounds better than it does in my own home theater in my house. Uh, <laughs> quite amazing. Um, really nice looking car, lots of storage. Um, going back to the trunk, just a surprising amount of storage. Like uh, my wife went to Costco the other day. We have a van, we have a crossover SUV, but she, since I drive the Tesla more than she does, she every opportunity she has to get, take the Tesla, that's the number one. So she took it to Costco and you know she filled the thing up and she's just like saying, man, it's just amazing how much space you have. I mean, look at the size of this trunk. This tr trunk is generally a lot bigger than you'd have in a conventional uh, gas powered vehicle that's the same size as this. And look at this, even more space. Normally you'd have a gas tank there, but no gas tank because this is an EV, so you have more space. And we're not done yet. <laughs> we have the frunk, <laughs> which is even more uh, space. And this is also a safety feature because you have all this space to absorb, uh, absorb crash energy in a frontal collision. Normally you'd have an engine here, which maybe you could get, you know, in a really bad collision, you could get pushed inside the passenger compartment. With uh, the Model 3, it's not the case. You have all that space to absorb crash energy. In fact, uh, when uh, the NHTSA uh, did crash testing on the Model 3, it was the safest vehicle they've ever tested by every single metric. The lowest probability of injury in a vehicle accident. Don't take my word for it. The information's out there. You can look it up yourself. So uh, not only is it fun and efficient and, uh, you know, um, you know, amazing, but it's also very, very safe. So, you know, when I'm driving my Tesla, I, I have my wife and often my, my two little kids. Well, I have a little bit more peace of mind knowing if I get in an accident, you know, the odds of us, you know, having, you know, severe injuries is a lot less in the Tesla, pretty much more than any other vehicle on the road. Quite amazing. And, uh, you know, another thing uh, that people don't always look at with EVs is, you know, you're going to save money on gas. I can't, I can't tell you how nice it is. I can't remember the last time I've been to the gas pump. I mean, I mean, I was going to the gas pump maybe two or three times a week. Now maybe I go once a month to gas up some of the other vehicles that we drive less because we use the EV more. Uh, but uh, maintenance and uh, repairs. Uh, when you have a gas car with thousands of moving parts uh, versus an EV with dozens of moving parts, there's just a lot less to go wrong, a lot less of service. You don't have engine uh, with oil and spark plugs and uh, timing belts and serpentine belts and things like that. Uh, there's a, you know, I'm the, I'm the used car manager. So, uh, you know, I have to put all our cars through the shop and, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a, a, a car of similar year and miles and they're going to be recommending, okay, we need to do a transmission flush. We need to do a coolant flush. We need to do, we need to do a front and rear uh, differential service. Uh, you know, if it's all wheel drive, we recommend an all wheel drive service. Uh, <laughs> we need to do a brake flush, uh, you know, obviously this has brakes, but this is another thing is that, you know, brakes can be expensive and, you know, sometimes I see cars with 20, 30,000 miles on them, sometimes needing brakes and it can be a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, depending on the car for just a set of rear brakes or a set of front brakes, especially like at a high performance European vehicle, you know, a set of front brakes can be two grand. Well, guess what? Uh, it'll probably be maybe 150,000 miles, if ever, that you're gonna have to think about doing the brakes in a Tesla because you have regenerative braking. It reverses the polarity of the electric motor. So most of the time when this thing is slowing down, it's not using the brakes. It's using uh, regenerative braking, which is recapturing that energy. You normally lose your braking through heat and putting it back in the battery, further making this vehicle efficient. So everywhere you look at it, there's money saving endeavors. And I've had my Tesla, you know, six months. Obviously it's not a long time, but I really have not had to do anything to it where I've had other vehicles where I've had to do, you know, oil changes. I had to do front brakes. I've had to, you know, in the past year, that's realistically some maintenance I've done. Ironically, one of my cars, which I love every month, my gas cars, the gas gauge broke. It cost me $700 to fix. And that's with my, you know, employee discount <laughs> working at an infinity store at a, a, a repair shop. Uh, you know, obviously on my EV, I don't have to worry about a gas gauge breaking. Obviously there's things that can go wrong with Teslas. 
you know they're not perfect they do have quirks and bugs i i can tell you that we've had hundreds of them uh, but i can tell you that they just seem to le need a lot less maintenance um than gas cars and then when you do have to repair them tesla is great in fact i had one uh, tesla had a software issue where i thought it was uh, still in california you drive it and i just think it was parked in one spot i didn't even have to bring it into tesla i used the uh the tesla app i opened up a service appointment they told me that hey we we pushed a firmware update we downloaded wirelessly an update to the vehicle download it and let us know and that fixed it uh, they also have mobile service where they'll come to you and f uh, fix things or do repairs i needed a new in cabin filter on my tesla and uh, for a nominal fee in fact probably for what it would cost me at another dealership to replace the in cabin filter they came to my work <laughs> at a car dealership and they replaced it for me and i didn't really even have to talk to him he went to the vehicle he was able to unlock it install it and i just paid and messaged the person through my app so uh, a lot less uh you know a lot less and uh you know a lot less late work you know hanging out at dealership you know dealership service departments or having to wait in line not so much of a thing if you own a Tesla versus having another off-brand vehicle. I can't tell you how many times I, I was waiting in line 15 minutes just to pay for a vehicle uh, to pick it up that we had serviced at another dealership, an off-brand vehicle that we were had, had some warranty work done and some uh, repairs that we had to pay for. I had to wait in line for 15 minutes just to pay for it and get my keys. Uh, with Tesla, they message you, hey, you know, we put, we put your key card in the center console, you use your phone as a key, so you just go to Tesla, you, you find your car, you unlock it, and you go. And if you have to pay for anything, you pay through your phone. Um, it's really amazing. Uh, so aside from that, let's get behind the wheel and see the real magic of the full self-driving capability. All right, for the grand finale, we have this Tesla with full self-driving capability. This is actually my own Tesla. Um, so to use full self-driving capability, they've actually made it a lot easier. When I first got this car, it actually monitored my driving for 30 days. I had to drive really uh, conservatively. Um, so I saw how fast I accelerated, how, how closely I followed people on the road, how fast I took corners. And if I did that stuff, <laughs> Uh, too aggressively, it would not allow me to uh, use FSD. So basically, uh, it, I had to monitor my driving for a month and then I was allowed into full self-driving beta. But now, they've had an update come out. So basically, this applies to everyone in North America uh, with full self-driving. Now you don't have to go through quite as much of that stuff to use the full self-driving capability. Uh, basically, they just require you uh, to drive your car safely on autopilot for 100 miles and then they'll allow you to access the full self-driving beta. And beta is key, because uh, uh, even though the system is amazing, it is in beta, so they still require you to keep your hand in the wheel and pay attention because uh, it's like a 14 or 15 year old kid driving. For the most part, it does okay, but in the complex situations, it's just too much for the system and uh, you have to take control. But I can tell you just over the last couple months of me, Having this system, uh, I've had a few updates, and every time they update it, it gets a little bit better, a little bit better, and uh, it's actually quite remarkable. Uh, just uh, how much I've seen it change and improve at the little time I've had it. So, I think it's reasonable to believe that if it keeps on progressing and improving at the rate as it does, that eventually they will be able to achieve a full self-driving where the car what can do everything on its own you won't need to pay attention you can read a book take a nap maybe you can even be drunk and it, you can be in the back seat and it can drive you home without worrying about getting a dui you can also see when operating the full self-driving software the display is a little bit different this is what we call the mind of a tesla so this is everything uh, that the tesla sees with cameras around it all right so we're going to operate the full self-driving and we're going to navigate to uh, a restaurant up the street. So basically at this point, uh, from what I've heard, I don't know if this is exactly true, this is uh, just from memory, uh, I think that right now the, the full self-driving computer in this Tesla, it's about able to track and monitor about 26 objects simultaneously. Any more than that uh, just is a little bit too much for the computer to handle, which is quite amazing. But that being said, probably uh, for this to be fully autonomous, it will probably need one more uh, hardware upgrade. 
uh, or possibly another upgrade on the cameras. Generally, uh, Tesla has uh, done those upgrades at no extra cost or for a very nominal cost for people that do have the full self-driving capability. That's kind of one of the uh, unspoken deals is that, you know, those who, you know, participated and bought the system early on, they, you know, get updates and improvements, be it uh, software or hardware. And uh, other thing I'd like to mention about autopilot and full self-driving is uh, as far as um, control goes, uh, it does actually let, allow you to hit the throttle and accelerate right while autopilot or full self-driving is engaged. I can hit the throttle a little bit just to help the car along. Sometimes there's a little bit too much space. I don't want to annoy someone behind me. So you'll allow you to creep the car forward a little bit uh, without disengaging it. Likewise, um, sometimes the systems are limited to a certain speed limit. You can actually override it and hit the accelerator and get it to go faster. Uh, than the speed limits are, it's restricted at without disengaging the system. And you can see here we're at a pretty busy intersection. There's a lot going on, but the car is tracking a lot of stuff. You can see that there's a person standing there. You know, can see the cars uh, making left-hand turns. In certain aspects, it can actually see things with the cameras all around it that I can't see. You can see that the, the autopilot or full self-driving is engaged, and I'm just hitting the throttle a little bit, and you can see you can creep the car a little bit forward without disengaging it which is nice sometimes too uh, it's nice to hit the throttle because sometimes it might be thinking too much when making a turn there might be people behind you so you can if you can clearly see that there's no cars coming you can kind of push the throttle and encourage the car to move okay go it's safe and the, the car will go and continue on with driving without disengaging the system um, the system has gotten a lot better about making turns. Uh, you know, in some situations, if there is traffic behind you and it's waiting too long to, you know, make a right or left-hand turn, people behind you can get annoyed. So sometimes it's nice to be able to, you know, hit the throttle and just let the car know, hey, it's okay. Go without, you know, annoying people behind you. <laughs> getting to a little bit more complex driving situations as you can see in the car with well, the full self-driving is doing a great job uh, it's smooth uh, the lane changes and maneuvers are more human-like uh, on some of the early versions of full self-driving things were a little bit more abrupt they're not quite as smooth a little bit more jerky and that's just you know the improvements of the system um, you know there's maybe a hundred plus thousand people right now operating the full self-driving software on Tesla's and um, Tesla is mo using all that data all those people driving operating that software and they're using that data to improve the system in fact they have a supercomputer uh, which basically uh, runs a, uh, a, com a computer you know the similar brain that's in this a similar full self-driving computer and it can basically do simulated events over and over again and it can train the system so it can create a simulated world uh, for the autonomous software to operate in and uh, you know and, and get better that way so I mean it's quite amazing what they're doing with uh, machine learning so Tesla has millions and millions of miles of full self-driving data I don't know if anyone else has that much data for autonomous driving and Tesla's approach to autonomous driving is a little bit different Tesla is just using pure vision they're just using the cameras in the vehicle to see everything this has cameras all around it you know we operate with cameras ourselves we have two cameras and we're able to drive trucks motorcycles fly airplanes do a lot of complex things with just two cam cameras so reasoning on Tesla's part is if a vehicle has cameras all around it then it should be able to handle most driving situations or all driving situations autonomously and um, a lot of the competing autonomous driving companies they're using a system called LiDAR and LiDAR has advantages and it has disadvantages uh, LiDAR 
it is a lot more expensive. Uh, you know, some of the other autonomous companies uh, like Waymo and Cruise, they have expensive uh, LiDAR units on top of the vehicles to operate the software. Tesla doesn't have any of that stuff. Uh, pretty much every Tesla made after 2019 is equipped with a full self-driving computer. Uh, so basically it just needs a software update and it can virtually be autonomous. So a lot of these other cars, they have expensive LiDAR sensors. They have to operate in a geofence location that's pre-mapped out. A Tesla, the whole idea is you can plop this anywhere and it will be able to drive itself. So it's a very different approach than the other companies. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more ambitious, but if Tesla can achieve this goal, they can achieve uh, autonomy. They can achieve a full self-driving at a much, much lower cost than everyone else and there's already a million Teslas on the road which can just get a software update and all of a sudden they're full self-driving. I don't think any other auto manufacturer is in a position like that. So a pretty non-dramatic drive. <laughs> Here we are at Dave's and Milton. It drove me from Infinity of Tacoma. That was about seven miles. No interventions, no having to help it. It took us right to the restaurant and now it has stopped. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And uh, I just got a full self-driving update a couple weeks ago and just off that update, it is a very, very noticeable difference, a very large improvement in the function of this system. And I can only imagine in a month or so, when I get another update to my full self-driving system, it shall be even better. And potentially, a couple of years down the road, I'm hoping that maybe this vehicle can be a robo-taxi for me. So maybe while I'm at work, this car can be out being an Uber for me, making money and helping <laughs> uh, recapture some of my uh, you know, monthly payment I make on this thing. Uh, and then maybe when the vehicle's pull, you know, paid off, then I have an asset. It's like having a, a, an investment property. It can go. It's like having a, you know, an Airbnb or something. But you know, instead of having this, this pay half a million dollars for a house, you have a, you know, fifty thousand dollar car, forty fifty thousand dollar car that can drive itself, uh, drive you. It can maybe park itself, do some amazing things. So now we're going to head back to the dealership. And we're going to give it one more test. <laughs> this is the hardest test of all. This is the one instance where the system still has issues and we have a, a rotary uh, with lots of traffic, two lanes, um, and uh, generally maybe one out of 20 times I can get the car with the full self-driving to get through the rotary uh, without too much drama. So we'll see how it does. So when I first got the full self-driving a couple months ago and I was able to use it, I have a 10 mile commute you know, to work and back home. And usually I'd have to intervene one, two, three, four times to, you know, take over uh, just because the system got overwhelmed, something happened. But now, after having two or three updates, uh, I can now use a full self-driving to drive me to work or drive me home and uh, hardly any interventions at all. Maybe one or two, if any. So the system is definitely improving uh, incrementally, but very noticeably. And um, it's uh, very remarkable in my opinion, you know, what a car can do. Basically, this is like a semi-sentient uh, animal <laughs> or maybe an insect, but you know, Tesla headquarters is not beaming information telling us what to do. This vehicle has a full self-driving computer, it has a computer brain, 
and it's reacting to the world around it and it's navigating through an ever-changing world and moving through it making decisions on its own and that to me is very remarkable in fact tesla is talking about having a tesla bot a humanoid robot but in a lot of ways this is a tesla bot it's a robot but instead of having legs it's and four wheels but this is doing robotic stuff it's thinking it's making decisions it's moving through a world of uh, other vehicles driven by people in much a way i think most people would not think that this vehicle is driving itself they just assume that i'm driving it so here we are into this rotary and uh we have a decent amount of traffic and it's starting to hit the brakes and get confused so i'm just gonna hit the accelerator I'm just about bumping the accelerator uh, just to encourage it to get through. So I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, deactivated the system. I'm just hitting the accelerator because it's getting a little bit uh, <laughs> unsure of itself. And uh, it managed to make it through the rotary with a little bit of assistance for me, but I didn't have to uh, disengage the, uh, the uh, full self-driving. And pretty much after that, it's just a straight shot to work. Um, so. As you can see, the full self-driving is not perfect. It's not uh, to the point where, uh, you know, I cannot pay attention, close my eyes, take a nap, do things on its own. But it is uh, doing a very good job driving on its own. <laughs> like I said, you know, probably just as good as a 14 or 15 year old, you know, human kid, 16 year old human kid who's just learning to drive or is driven a teeny bit and kind of learning the ropes. Obviously, full self-driving isn't for anybody. Um, you know, I tell people, uh, most people at work that ask for full self-driving, I'm like, do you really want full self-driving? Do you know what it is? Maybe you think you want full self-driving, but maybe you really just want autopilot or enhanced autopilot. Um, I think at this point, full self-driving is still kind of more for the nerdier kind of people like want to push the envelope uh, as far as, you know, technology goes, if that's fun for you. Uh, definitely check it out but if you're kind of more <laughs> not looking to push the envelope as far as you know driving technology goes I think you know enhanced autopilot or just regular autopilot is awesome I would happily drive a Tesla for years with just a regular autopilot and that would make my life ten times better than a car with just regular cruise control um, like I said if I have to drive any vehicle uh, any amount of distance more than a couple miles if i have to go on a highway do some errands for work nine times out of ten almost ten times out of ten i'm taking a tesla with autopilot it's comfortable uh it's relaxing for me i'm not a big fan i like driving but i like driving on beautiful empty roads with beautiful scenery and no other cars driving in this chaos of all these people and stuff and stop and go traffic is pretty much torturous to me so to have a vehicle to take that workload off of me and I can just sit here, enjoy my music, sip a cup of coffee, look around a little bit, I can't tell you how much that makes me happy.